Hi all, welcome to Grape City Documents uh, webinar. We are pleased to announce the new V5.1 release and uh, today I will be covering major new highlights uh, coming up in this release. Uh, my name is Shilpa Sharma, I am product manager for Grape City Documents and uh, if you have any queries on the new features, please email me on this address. Before I move on to the agenda of the webinar, let me give you an overview of what Grape City Documents is about. So productivity, efficiency and security, these are key aspects of document management. And this is the reason why organizations are shifting from paper documents to digital documents. So with trillions of electronic data that is floating over the web, the documents are being generated from data, reports, analysis, and collaborations, user inputs for uh, storage, retrieval of data, or sharing data across at runtime every day. So Grape City Documents is a set of document APIs that helps create, load, edit, save, convert XLSX spreadsheets, PDF, images, and docx files using csharp.net, vb.net, or java. There is no dependency on Acrobat or MS Office Suite products. These APIs are fully supported on .NET 6. And also included in Grip City Documents is Grip City Documents PDF Viewer. It's a JavaScript-based PDF Documents Viewer and Editor. It helps uh, to view, edit, design, fill, submit, or print PDF forms or PDF documents uh, over the web and also save modified PDFs on the client. So the snapshot you see over here is Grip City Documents PDF Viewer with a PDF that has been generated with uh, Grape City Documents for PDF or GCPDF API. Uh, multiple users are seen here collaborating over the PDF documents and they are using comment and reply tool to comment over the documents. Also included are other products. You can have a look on www.gripsy.com slash documents dash API. Starting with Grape City Documents for PDF new features. So GCPDF recently released uh, the PADEA standard in its digital signature support uh, in the API. Uh, this standard basically ensures that the signature remains uh, valid um, in, the, uh, in the long term. Uh, over the time, uh, it may be possible that you want to check whether the signature was valid at the time it was signed, a concept called long-term validation. So, uh, it may happen that um, the, uh, the certificate used to sign the document may expire or the certificate authority does not exist anymore or the cryptographic algorithm used to uh, create the electronic signature, uh, uh, it is not valid anymore. Uh, so, uh, uh, however, you still want to ensure that your signature was valid at the time of signing. So, this requirement is met by these two levels, BLT and BLTA levels. Uh, so, two new classes have been implemented to support the long-term validation signatures. So, the document security store, it's uh, like a PDF dictionary in the document catalog of the PDF spec. Uh, what it does is uh, it uh, allows to add all the verification information for the signature. So, GCPDF uh, allows to uh, add uh, the document security store uh, class instance uh, and uh, through which you would be able to add all the verification information while uh, adding the signature programmatically. And this is where it exists, security.document-security-store class. Another method that has been implemented is the GCPDF document uh, dot timestamp method. Uh, it basically establishes uh, the exact contents of the complete PDF at the time indicated uh, in the timestamp token. So this method uh, allows to add a document timestamp signature and uh, this uh, method has to be used in the same way as uh, we use in the GCPDF document.sign method. A uh, snapshot here shows uh, a PDF uh, signature, advanced signature properties uh, of a signature that has been added to a PDF. Um, and in this dialog, uh, you see that uh, the PADS signature level BLTA uh, is reflecting uh, as well as the timestamp details. So how it works. 
So uh, if you take a PDF and load it into GCPDF uh, document, uh, uh, you create a signature field and then you create the document security store dot verification parameters, uh, add the certificate and then you add uh, the uh, uh, this document security store dot verification parameters uh, to the signature field. Uh, and when you save it, it will save it uh, uh, with a PADESB LT level. Um, if in, in the same PDF, uh, if you add a timestamp uh, using the timestamp uh, properties and you save it uh, and then you add the timestamp to the document, uh, then the BLTA level would be generated for the signature. And in this same PDF, if you want to add some verification information from the document security store, uh, you can do so. Uh, and when you add this information to the signature field and then you save the document, uh, it will be saved for long term validation. Now, moving on to GCPDF viewer, in this release, we have added the ability to define sticky behavior for certain toolbar buttons. Uh, those can be form fields or annotation uh, buttons in the toolbar. So what you do is uh, if you are uh, designing a PDF form um, and you want to add uh, certain um, form fields uh, without going back to the toolbar to and fro, uh, selecting it and placing it again, you can just uh, set a sticky behavior uh, property of toolbar layout. Uh, to the but set of buttons which you want to uh, make sticky and uh, then you select them from the uh, toolbar and when you drop it you, you, you can continuously keep on adding those form fields on the PDF document uh, without going back to the toolbar again. Okay, So this new property has been added to GCPDF viewer this time. In GC Word we have enhanced the font support and also added certain font effects. Uh, which will help you add these effects when generating Word documents. And we have also added new save options class that can help you control how to save the document with these fonts. Um, also, we extended the font info collection class that will help you add certain standard forms uh, fonts from the gravecity.documents.txt namespace. This will be an added advantage when you are generating a document. Uh, and uh, we also extended uh, the settings class uh, to uh, support the save options class. Uh, we also enable uh, defining certain local properties uh, to find fonts related to a particular language culture. So if you are using uh, uh, fonts from a certain culture, uh, these properties if you set in the word document it will help you find certain fonts uh, with the help of these properties. So locale name can be defined uh, to get or set uh, the locale name for a certain formatted characters or if you want to set locale name bi uh, that is uh, you want to set the locale name for certain complex script characters you can use this property and the property locale name far east will help you get or set the locale name for uh, the asian characters in addition gc word also adds fill and line properties to the font class you can add uh, font effects uh, to your documents such as uh, line and the line can have three types solid gradient or no fill so this is a resume document where you see a font effect has been applied where a gradient type of effect is applied here ranging from purple to magenta color and the outline is solid black how you do this uh, through code uh, you define a character style um, and uh, you define uh, the uh, fill style for the font uh, and you set the fill as gradient, fill type as gradient and then you define the gradient colors from where it should range, purple and magenta in this case and you also define the line effect and you set the line as uh, uh, with, uh, you set the line with a uh, fill type as solid uh, and a color black, you, it gives you an outline like this and then you add that style back to your uh, document and this is what it gets generated. Moving on to GC Excel. In last release, we introduced the new import data function that will help you import just the data from Excel files rather than loading the whole Excel file into, into the object model, a process that makes it much more faster to import data from Excel files. 
So uh, in the last release, uh, we use the import data function to define the range from where you want to import the data from. In this release, we have enhanced this function where uh, if you don't remember the source from where you want the data from, you just know the file name. Uh, you can pass the file name and the source name into the import data function. The source name you can get from uh, the workbook.getNames uh, new interface where you pass the file name and it will return an array of worksheets and table names available in, in that Excel file. So when you get this uh, list, you can then pass it back to the import data function. Here you see uh, there's an Excel file. There are two sheets and uh, each sheet will have table. So the names zero and names one, when you get, uh, when you define such an array uh, and use the get names interface and pass the file stream, uh, name zero and name one are the sheet names and name two and name three are the table names. And uh, then you define the data and you import the data by passing the file stream and the uh, names uh, second uh, uh, index uh, from the array. Uh, which is the table name aging and then you in, in, in the workbook you define the range where you want to display that data from and then you save the workbook uh, and this is the result so you get you import this table just the table into a new file. Now moving on to the new additions uh, to the SVG support we have in GCPDF, GC Word and GC Imaging APIs. So in the last release, we had introduced a GCSVG document class that helps you to create, load, modify internal structure of SVG uh, and uh, save to SVG image. Uh, in this release, we also make it possible to render graphics on an SVG document uh, using the new GCSVG graphics class. This class is basically derived from GC graphics class, which we generally use in these three APIs to draw graphics on. Uh, the PDF word or image documents. Uh, GC Imaging introduces the two SVG document method. It helps you to say, to convert a set of drawing commands from GC SVG graphics to a well-defined object model of SVG document. Uh, in this release, we also uh, uh, support saving individual pages of PDF document or a Word document to SVG and SVG Z formats. Uh, using the uh, gcpdf document.page.save as svg method and the similar method has been uh, has also been introduced in gc word layout.page class so this will help you uh, save a page a pdf page or a word page uh, in svg format and uh, also supported is a new method to svgz which is introduced in both gcpdf document and gc word layout classes uh, this will return a byte array with compressed SVG data, drawing the source, PDF page or a docx page. Now with all these additions, uh, users would be able to export common graphics, text, PDF pages or word pages to the SVG images. As you see on the right, uh, uh, one of the page of a PDF document has been converted to an SVG image. So uh, in this example, we take an image in a different format, uh, like in this example, we've taken a JPEG image. And what we'll do is we'll use the GCSVG graphics uh, class to draw text over that image and then convert that whole graphics uh, into an SVG document and then save it to an SVG image format. So we load an image, uh, we define a graphics uh, object uh, which is of type GC SVG graphics class and uh, then when we load the image we draw that image over the graphics at a particular area and we draw some text over it uh, we define the text settings and then we convert the graphics to an SVG document uh, and then we save it to an SVG image format so you see how the uh, new methods has, have helped us to load an image in any format and draw some text over it. In fact, you can draw, uh, draw some graphics over it, then save whole of it into an SVG image format. And in GC PDF, you can convert a single page PDF page to SVG format or SVG Z format. You just uh, load the PDF document and convert one of the pages to SVG using the save as SVG method. Uh, and if you want to save it to SVG Z format, so you just uh, call the page dot to SVG Z format, uh, define additional settings, uh, and uh, you you you'll have a SVG Z format as well.
and similarly in GC Word you can load a Word document and convert one of the pages to SVG format using uh, page dot save as SVG method define additional settings uh, and you can also render that page to the byte array with the compressed data uh, and save it in SVGZ format so the two SVGZ method of the page will help you do so and here you see a word documents uh, page has been converted to a page in SVG format so these were some major highlights of v5.1 release uh, thank you for going through this webinar and if you want to have a look on the full release uh, we have added several more features in this release uh, and we have added all those details in these what's new blogs please follow these links to view full release details thank you